Imagine you had a device, one that could tell you the future. It could tell you where you'll be, when you'll be, and how you'll be within your recent future, that is. Let's also assume that you found it while on a walk. Attempting to test this device out, you bring it to a split in the path in the hopes that you can change the future. You can either go right or left, and according to the device, you'll be taking the left. In defiance of what the device says you'll do, instead of taking the left path, you take the right path. But let's back up a bit. If this device could truly tell the future, wouldn't it already know that you would attempt to change your future? Yes, and in that fact, it would have displayed that you were going to take the right path instead of taking the left path, as it used to say. But if it were to initially show that you were going to take the right path, you would have chosen the left path. Point being, you, the person using this device, will always choose the path that's opposite to the one the device shows you. So the true question is, which path would you end up taking, the right or the left? This is what I call the future telling paradox. Well, this is paradoxical because you seemingly couldn't take either path. If it says you'll take the left path, you'll take the right path. But if it says you'll take the right path, you'll take the left path. It can tell the future. So even if you did decide to take a different path, it will know. It doesn't matter what you're doing. The device can never be wrong if it could truly tell the future. This seemingly implies fate, as to say the future is set in stone. Clearly, what the device says is, and to defy that would be paradoxical. But then, what about free will? I mean, clearly we make our own decisions, right? Well, think about it like this. Everything you do is done in reaction to something else. Everything in nature happens because of something else. We are symbiotically dependent on everything around us. The perfect example of this is the future-telling paradox. You or whoever else may be using this future-telling device are actively choosing your path based on what the device says. The path that you take is quite literally taken in reaction to what the device says you'll do. Even the littlest, most minute things all happen because of something else. I woke up this morning because of a complex chemical reaction that was provoked within my brain. You clicked on this video because there was something that compelled you to do so. It was done in reaction to said compelling force. Even something as meta as my choice to be writing this script right now was done for a specific reason. And every time, without fail, there are multiple different factors leading up to and influencing your decision. Your decision that you so ignorantly believe you're making. I've always thought it was funny when people used phrases like, I guess the universe is just against me today. But now, I literally can't see it as anything else. You're not the one making a choice here. It's everything that has influenced you throughout your life that's actually making the decision. Even something like picking what color shirt you want to wear today isn't technically chosen by you. Though it doesn't seem like there would be anything to directly influence our decision, there are many subconscious events manipulating our thought process such as our mood, preferences, bias, brain activity, the weather, and so on. While they do have an extremely minuscule impact on our decision, they shouldn't just be brushed off. It's all these things and more that add up to influence our decision. And removing even just one might change the outcome of history, though it's true that we don't know what causes everything. This mostly applies in the realm of quantum mechanics and other lesser known areas of science. So are we bound by fate? Well, the scientific and logical answer would be, yeah. As a few of you may recall, I already made a video titled The Future Telling Paradox, and if I'm going to be honest about the video, it wasn't my best. But this is where I stopped. This is where I concluded the video, not realizing the implications of this. It only came to my mind after the fact, and still wasn't entirely comprehensible. I'll put it blunt. Fate disproves the multiverse.
For the few unaware of what the multiverse, many worlds theory, or multiverse theory is, let me take a minute to explain. The idea is that there are infinite different worlds and universes that are very similar to ours. And for every choice made, there is a new universe created. If I were to choose between a blue shirt and a red shirt, there would be two different universes created for each decision, one where I choose the red shirt and one where I choose the blue shirt. Supposedly, this applies to every conceivable decision and possible outcome ever made throughout history. You may have heard people say things like, in a parallel universe, I would be a millionaire, and this derives from the multiverse theory. The whole concept of there being a parallel universe to ours is used in theory, fiction, science, philosophy, theology, and other similar topics. It's popular. If free will is paradoxical, then fate is fact. If fate is fact, then the multiverse can't exist. Let me explain. As I already described, every decision we make, and beyond that, everything in nature, happens because of something else. Everything that happens, happens in reaction to other things. A large part of the multiverse theory is based on free will. For new universes to be created, we need to have the freedom of choice. Every decision that we make needs to be able to be counteracted with the opposing choice. And all the choices we make are made based on differing factors. Let's put it like this. Let's make a copy of this current universe. We have two different universes running at the same time. Everything in history is the same, and everything leading up to a decision is the same. Now, let's also assume that we came to the classic example of a choice between wearing a blue shirt and wearing a red shirt. No matter how many copies of our universe you create, you will consistently choose the same shirt. Every factor that made you choose, say, the red shirt, would remain in place for you to always choose the red shirt. To assume that we would choose the blue shirt in an alternate reality is to assume that the factors leading up to this decision wouldn't be in place, as if history didn't happen at all, or at least happened in a different way. Let me give an example of a choice that's not as subconscious. Let's assume that you had to choose between fruit and vegetables. If your choice was fruit in one universe, then it should be the same in all the universes. The only way to bypass this is to change your preference by rewriting your entire history, and your parents' history, and their parents' history, and... Well, here's the second issue with the multiverse. The only plausible way for the multiverse to exist is for it to have a different starting point for each universe, meaning each universe would have a different beginning. It's basic cause and effect, or causality. You can believe that there are infinite different universes with different starting points, and that's fine. But this proves that the universe that we currently exist in is unique to us alone. Hmm. You know, if everything in the universe happens in reaction to something else, then what about the beginning of time, space, and matter? If we could discernibly trace every cause to every reaction all the way back to the start of time, what happened first? What caused the beginning of the universe as we know it? We know for a fact that the universe had a beginning. If we've been around for infinite years, then we would already be stuck in something known as the heat death, the equalization and even distribution of all matter and energy, which is caused by entropy or the second law of thermodynamics. Anyway, point being, time, space, and matter had to have started from something. No matter what you believe, whether you think the world was created by God 6,000 years ago or 3 billion years ago from the Big Bang, you have to admit there was a beginning. And my question is, what was the cause for the first reaction? Any logical person knows that zero doesn't equal one. Something can't come from nothing. And we haven't once been able to prove that it can within nature. So, did something, or someone, help us begin? Were they the cause of the first reaction? And does this prove it? To many, it might, as the only logical time we have ever concluded that zero equals one in our natural universe is when the universe began. Everything happens in reaction to something else. 
So to say that a universe can just begin on its own in reaction to, well, literally nothing, is illogical. If nothing exists, then all that can continue to exist is nothing. Whether you believe in a higher power or not, this conundrum shouldn't be ignored. If the future telling paradox is correct, and I didn't mess anything up, then it's truly surprising how much this leads to. And as a side note, not to ruin the Mandela effect for anyone, but if alternate realities as I've described them can't exist, then there's no real way for us to have memories from this so-called parallel universe, but that can just be left up to debate, I suppose. And another thing I didn't go into is the consequences of there being a higher power. But I think that strains too far off topic. To conclude this video, I'd like to say one more thing about the topic of fate. If it ever concerns you that your decisions aren't actually decisions but reactions, this might be something to take into consideration. While it is true that your actions are made in reaction, they're still yours to make. And based on causality, the actions that you take will have an eternal effect on history. So in that sense, you and your essence as a being will live on for eternity.